This video is going to run through an example of propagating uncertainty through a calculation using data from experimental work. In this example, we're going to be calculating heat, or Q, for a volume of water that's been heated. To do that, let's quickly jot down the formula necessary to calculate Q. So in this formula, Q is heat. M is the mass of water, C is the specific heat capacity for water, and delta T is the change in temperature of the water. Let's now look at some example data. So you'll notice the data is separated into two sections. Firstly, I have measurements that I made personally during the experiment, and secondly, we often need some literature data depending on the calculation that we're doing. First of all, you'll notice that in each column heading I have the absolute uncertainty for my measurements. If you're not sure how to find these, you'll want to check out one of the other cohesive chemistry videos. For the mass of water, you can see an absolute uncertainty of plus or minus 0.01. And for the two temperature measurements, you'll see it's plus or minus 0 0.5 degrees. Now, given that my formula on the right hand side requires change in temperature, the first simple calculation I'm going to have to do is to calculate the change in temperature using the final and initial temperature values. So if I do that calculation, 38 subtract 19.5 gives me an answer of 18.5. Let's put that value in our table. So because we've done a calculation there, we also need to consider how uncertainty might be propagated. In this case, because I was adding or subtracting two values in the calculation, I need to add together the two absolute uncertainties that I can see in my table in grey. So in this case, because I've subtracted one of my temperature values from the other, the final temperature change is going to have an absolute or a total absolute uncertainty of 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5. So once I've calculated the total absolute uncertainty for that temperature change, I need to make sure that I put that in my table. I now have all of the values needed to plug into my formula. The mass of water, the specific heat capacity of water from the literature data, meaning I would have to find that, not measure it in a lab, and the change in temperature. You'll notice that for the mass value and for the change in temperature value, we have absolute uncertainties in my table. For the specific heat capacity, because that is data taken from literature and not measured directly in my lab, that value we can treat as having no uncertainty. Let's now do the calculation with our values and then consider afterwards how we would propagate the uncertainty through that calculation. There's the values put into my formula and if I calculate that, it gives me a value of 3,870 joules. And I've given that number to three significant figures for reasons that you might want to check out in another cohesive chemistry video. Now then, to consider propagating uncertainty in this step of the calculation, we are not adding or subtracting values here, we are multiplying. And when I am multiplying or dividing values in a calculation, I need to add together the percentage uncertainties of any data that I've used from my own measurements. So what I need to do is convert the absolute uncertainties in my tables into percentage uncertainties. And to do that, I use this formula. Percentage uncertainty equals the absolute uncertainty divided by the measurement value multiplied by 100. So let's do that for mass. 
I will need to take the absolute uncertainty, which is 0 0.01, divided it by the measurement, which is 50.0, and then multiply it by 100. And that gives me a value of 0.0002%. That sounds pretty small. Let's now find out the percentage uncertainty for the change in temperature. I will need to take the absolute uncertainty, which we calculated to be 1.0, divide it by the measurement value, which was 18.5, and multiply that by 100. This gives me a value of 0.05%, plus or minus, that is. Now, given the literature data of the specific heat capacity is from literature, so has no uncertainty, these are the only two percentage uncertainties I need to worry about. So now I've calculated the percentage uncertainties of each of my values. All I need to do is add them together to give me a total percentage uncertainty for the value we calculated for Q. And if I add these two values together and take into account the decimal places, my final percentage uncertainty in the value of Q is 0.05% or plus or minus 0.05%. So to prevent, present my final value Q, we said was 3,870 joules plus or minus 0.05%. Let's now summarize the key points from this video. Can you give me give me five minutes, James? And in a calculation where you are multiplying or dividing measurements, you will need to add together the percentage uncertainty values for each measurement. And the final point is that if you are using literature data in a calculation, we assume it has no uncertainty, so you do not need to propagate any values related to it. Hopefully this video was of some help.